Well, hi, Charles Millman here. This is a short little video that accompanies my video review about the EcoFlow Delta 1300. And in that video, I talked about recharging and a few tips about this. And I had a few more things I wanted to say, but I didn't. That video was already getting past a little past 15 minutes, so I thought I would just do a short little video for you right now with some, with some ideas. Um, my focus primarily is the average camper, and the average camper. Uh, is someone who typically camps on weekends with the occasional long trip. And that's my wife and I. Um, we typically camp for a weekend or a long weekend. I'm retired, so I've got some flexibility there, that's for sure. Um, but in, not coming up pretty soon, a few weeks, we're going to be gone for almost three weeks to Colorado, Rocky Mountain National Park, and various places. And so um, that's the kind of camper that I'm talking about. Most of the time we camp with shore power. Our upcoming trip we're at KOA is a lot, except for five nights that we'll be at Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, they don't have shore power there. And maybe a stop on the way out from Indiana, maybe in Kansas somewhere, and on the way back also in Kansas at a rest area or a Cracker Barrel. So at those particular places, um, we could use the uh, EcoFlow to run a lot of things. And so uh, I kind of want to talk about that uh, situation and just give you some tips. Some of these are like Captain Obvious things, but um, just wanted to go through a couple things very, very quickly. Um, I did a poll among runaway camper owners, and most people said like 90% of the time they camp with shore power, but they still have the occasional need if they're road tripping where they might need um, a battery like this, a lithium battery. And some, camp, some campgrounds don't have uh, shore power either. And so that, that's what we're talking about here. Um, so when you recharge uh, this, again, it charges from 0 to 80 in about an hour uh, with AC power. And it also, uh, I ran it from zero, and um, I ran it up to 100%. It took an hour and 42 minutes. So this is such a fast charging lithium. It really gives you some serious options. Uh, for me, I think the best method is find an AC outlet. That's the best thing, the easiest thing to do. Uh, another would be uh, Honda or other brand, good quality brand generator. I've got a, the Honda 2000, and uh, I don't take it anymore and I don't plan on taking it. I, I talked about maybe taking it to Utah if it was super hot, but I typically would avoid super hot weather. But I have that option and maybe you carry a generator with you, so that would be another option. But make sure it's your generator um, puts out a clean stream of electricity. There are some generators, some cheaper ones that are kind of flaky how they do that, and so that's up to you to check that. Make sure it's sending out uh, good, clean energy electricity for uh, your EcoFlow. You wouldn't want to damage it. Um, with solar, they say four hours, but that means four hours if you have 400 watts. And so I've got a 100 watt panel on top of my camper, and then I've got the EcoFlow 110, and then I've got a Jackery Solar Saga 100 as well. Uh, but that's iffy because you have to get them angled right. Uh, you have to have a sunny day, but it is definitely doable. But if you've got a bunch of panels on top of your van or camper or your schoolie or whatever you've got, uh, then you would be able to uh, get this charged back up in four hours or so in perfect sunlight. And then the last option would be plugging into your cigarette lighter, the 12 volt output. And uh, some cars have inverters built into them. Uh, but I understand that some of them aren't that great. And so some people, I know Hobotech suggests that you buy a Best Tech 300 or 500 watt inverter and run that, uh, plug it into the AC plug. Um, all I would say is check, do your math and check your vehicle uh, so you don't, you don't want to be blowing fuses. And I know that can be a problem if your inverter is really big. So, and then some people actually have an inverter uh, installed by the dealer in their car uh, and I don't know about that. I just know that's, that's an option that some people do. Um, so let's say, um, for example, my wife and I, we're at Rocky Mountain or someplace, and we ran this down to zero. How am I going to get it recharged? Well, first, I would say look on site. And at many places, uh, national parks and, and um, state parks, quite often there's an outlet in the bathroom. Now, you're going to have to babysit this. You don't want to just leave that there, but I've seen people actually leave laptops <laughs> in a bathroom and they're not around. I th they're very trusting. I'm, I, I won't be that trusting with something that costs this much, but that would be a possibility. Um, 
I don't know if the park ranger would stop you. Um, so, you know, you could ask or just do it and uh, say you're sorry if, if it's not allowed. But you see people charging laptops and phones all the time. Um, some parks, national parks and some state parks have like a pavilion and quite often uh, people use those for parties and uh, weddings and they have electrical outlets and sometimes they're left on all the time so that would be a possibility. In the park you're at there may be a nature center there you would definitely need to ask and I have a feeling most places would tell you no but you just never know. The worst they can do is tell you no. Uh, and then also on site in that campground uh, you may have generator hours and so if you've got a generator um, the Honda could charge it just as fast as my uh, um, house outlets. Um, and so many places have hours where you could run it or maybe a neighbor. You make friends in campground, maybe they've got one and they're not using it. You could ask and you know, offer to pay gas or something. So that would, that would definitely be a possibility. Another thing on site in the campground, of course, would be with your solar panels. And that can be tricky because you don't want to babys have to babysit things. So look for my video. I'll put a link down below and maybe up above here. Uh, I, I did a, a video about the, my simple solar system uh, for the average camper. And uh, it's been very popular. Over 40,000 people have watched it. And it explains how I've got a solar panel and hole cut in my floor. And I can run cables and lock uh, my lithiums inside and charge it. So that way I don't have to babysit it. Um, if there are no generator hours, for example, then one thing you could do is just drive out of the out of the park, out of the campground, and just go to a shopping center or to a Walmart and just get off to the edge somewhere and run that generator. And I really doubt you'll have any trouble with that. Um, a lot of different places you could find a uh, uh, tractor supply or something. Just get on their parking lot and get off to the side. And I don't think that would be a problem at all. And in an hour, an hour and a half, you've got this back up if you ran it all the way down. If you didn't run it all the way down, you won't be running it that long. Another possibility, real quick here, is you know, like a coffee shop or a restaurant, especially outdoors, because this thing will make some noise when it's uh, really uh, doing that fast charging. Uh, but there are quite often outlets there, and I think I would definitely ask in advance. Uh, if you go to a laundromat and wash clothes, which, which my wife and I do well, several times on a trip, uh, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't mind that, but again, I, I would ask. Um, if there's no one there, I just plug it in and go. Um, some people have uh, gym memberships that are nationwide. Uh, there, I think they might be a little picky, but uh, you know, you can ask. The worst thing that could happen is they say no. And then my last suggestion is just happenstance. You may be getting a Coke somewhere and someone asks about your camper, or, or you just get in a conversation. You could just say, do you know some place where I could plug in? And uh, I don't want you to get murdered by a serial killer, but you know, you might meet someone and and um, you have mutual interest and you're talking and you just say something about that and they go, hey, I live, you know, four blocks away or half a mile away. Why don't you just run over and just, you can just plug into my garage outlet for an hour and we could talk some more. So um, I don't want you to get straight up murdered, <laughs> but, you know, there are different ways you can work this out. So um, the EcoFlow, because it charges so fast, wherever you're going to charge uh, won't take too long. So there's just some, uh, some tips and I'm sure you've got some other great ideas that might work as well. Thanks for watching.